She's barely gained consciousness, and when she sees me standing over her naked, I can imagine that my virtual absence of humanity fills her with mind-bending horror. Welcome to the Gentleman's Guide to Vampires, and a slightly different introduction to the Clan of the Rose, Clan Toreador, a clan of degenerates, a clan of deviants. And at the same time, possibly the most human clan of all. The clan with the closest link to humanity. The clan that still feels like it's alive. No clan upholds the masquerade with more zeal. With such religious fanaticism as Clan Toreador. One of the seven clans of the Camarilla. The Toreador are especially gifted at crafting masks to conceal their true <laughs> intentions. The Toreador are especially gifted manipulators, carousers. If you want to know who started that war in that city several hundred miles away, that one that brought the establishment down and erected a new one in place, you can almost guarantee that if you bet on the Toreador, you will get your money back two or threefold because the Toreador are more skilled at bringing down establishments and erecting establishments than any other. Do not listen to what the Ventru say. The Ventru feel that they are the stalwarts, they are the ones who uphold the masquerade, who keep the Camarilla afloat. Do not listen to the Bruja, who claim that they are the only ones with true links to humankind. Those are the only ones with true links to emotion, true understanding, true empathy of what humans feel. Do not listen to the Tremere, to the Nosferatu, to the Malkavians, all of those outcasts. Listen only to Clan Toreador, the wearers of masks, the Clan of the Rose, the clan that controls more than you could ever see. Their control is ephemeral. They do not have to hold something in their hand to know that they have it. They are not keepers of power. They are not princes in cities. They are not kings on thrones, or at least they are not in the majority. They are not the Ventru. They do not need to be seen to rule. In a Toreador's mind, just knowing is enough, because they will receive the accolades of their clanmates. They will receive the praise of the harpies in Elysium. When a vampire wants a rumour spread, when a vampire wants to know what is truly going on behind the throne in the city, they will approach the Toreador. Because while the Nosferatu may be spy masters and the Malkavian may babble foresight and soothsay, the Toreador know the true word on the street because they put that word there. Their start, their beginning, was no less auspicious than any other clan. While, however, the Toreador beginnings are slightly more ambiguous. You see, while the followers of Set will claim that Sutek was a god in his own right, far above the other antediluvians, and while the Ventru will say that their clan founder was the favoured of Cain, and while the Asamites will say that Hakim was the judge of other kindred, the Toreador will name multiple founders. Some will say Arakel, the sculptress. Some will say Ishtar. Some will claim other names, other titles. The Toreador clan genealogy, the history, is whatever a Toreador makes of it. The most enthralling story. The thing that makes you buy into the lie the most. Because the Toreador, unlike the Ventru, unlike the Tremere, have no formal clan organisation. And that is 
a benefit to the Toreador because it means that each Toreador has to stand on his own two feet. A Toreador is only worth as much as he can do. And that kind of working class attitude, that kind of libertarian attitude, serves them so very, very well because it makes them an indispensable part of the Camarilla. The Camarilla will not have survived as many centuries as it has without the backbone of the Toreador. Arguably, humanity would not have survived for as long as it has without the Toreador. Is it true that the antediluvian was the lover of Absimiliad, the founder of Clan Nosferatu? Possibly. Is it true that their founder was in fact Zilla of the second generation and lover of Cain? Possibly. Is it true that their founder was active through to the ancient knights of Greece and founded such great holy architecture as the Parthenon and all other Athenian and such like statues, relics, things that have gone through history. Is it true that the Toreador clan founder was the vital push that sent Rome to attack Carthage and ousted the Bruja and Asamite power base from that place? Is it true that the Bruja were never worshipping demons at all in Carthage, that this tale of human sacrifice was all just a Toreador ruse so that they could gain more power and yet it was a ruse that every other clan very nearly all of them believed because the Toreador said it with such gravitas because the Toreador are the masters of presence not just the discipline of presence, but the very skill of presence. When a Toreador walks into a room, everyone looks because they want to know who the Toreador is going to go up to to speak with. They want to know what action that Toreador is going to take. Who will the Toreador snub? Who will the Toreador smile at? Who will the Toreador nod at? Every single motion a Toreador makes, whether in Elysium, on the street, in battle with Sabat Pax, is very telling and vitally important to every information network in every Camarilla city. The movers and shakers of the Camarilla are the Toreador. And the Toreador are protectors of humanity. That does not make them good. It makes them responsible. They feel responsible. Not in a ventru self aggrandizing way. <laughs> no, they feel responsible because if they do not act as the shepherds of humanity, shepherding them into the slaughterhouses of the Camarilla cities, where, quite frankly, humans are prey. They are no better than how a sabbat would treat a human, but they are controlled at the same time. If they did not do it, who would? The Tremere have their heads in books all the time. The Ventru are so concerned with retaining power and combating the Sabbat, they do not even think of humanity. The Bruja want to make a point so badly that they miss the point. The Toreador are the only ones with clear heads until it comes to beauty. Until it comes to the things that matter most. Because through some curse or through some lineage, the Toreador have at some point become entranced, transfixed by beauty. What is beauty? Why, that is in the eye of the beholder. What one Toreador may see as beautiful and another may see as ugly. But the point remains that when a Toreador witnesses something that the Toreador believes is beautiful, that can be a hairline between beautiful and not. That Toreador cannot move. Because the Toreador remembers what it was to be human. The Toreador remembers what it was to breathe fresh air. The Toreador remembers what it was to feel blood coursing through his veins. To feel a heartbeat. To feel an orgasm. To feel breath of a lover on their cheek. They remember what it was to eat a fine meal, to drink a fine drink. Toreador remembers what it was to feel the sun's rays on her skin. The Toreador remembers all of this. 
And in that moment where the Toreador sees that beautiful thing, sees that statue that reminds them of something from their humanity, sees that painting, sees that otherworldly, handsome human, that member of the kind that they just want to reach out, they just want to reach out and touch them and love them. They want to possess them. They want to control them. They want to bring that human to them and feel that warmth against their skin. They want to feel alive again. And so they will be that human's lover. They will be that human's mentor. They will be a benefactor. They will be a friend. They will be a boss. They'll be a colleague. They'll be whatever they have to be in order to get as close to that human as possible. But a Toreador, with any willpower, will not stay transfixed for long. For that mask, that mask of a lover, will eventually come off. And on will go another mask. The mask of a peacock. The mask of a predator. The mask that says the Toreador knows that it is the most beautiful thing in the room, that it knows that whatever was luring it was a vice, was a weakness. The ire of a Toreador can best be described as revenge turned into an art form. When a Toreador realises that he has been betrayed by the kind, lured in by this weakness, this curse, then the wrath of the Toreador is enough to make a gangrel or bruja blanch. The Toreador are such emotional beings, but it is not a bruja raw emotion, it is a Toreador sociopathic emotion. This is why the Toreador anti-tribute frighten the Camarilla Toreador so much, because the Toreador can see what they could become if they did not have these controls in place. The Toreador get written off as feminine pansies, dancers, artists, sculptors, musicians, actors, vampires that would rather stare at themselves in the mirror than engage in Camarilla politics. But while that vampire is staring at himself in the mirror, he is thinking and he is working things out. The vampire cannot just see himself in the mirror, because that Toreador vampire can see everyone in the room behind him. And while the other vampires are laughing at the Toreador and saying, oh look, another one of the degenerates transfixed by his own image, the Toreador's eyes are moving, taking in everything that goes on behind him. There is nothing, there is nothing nice about the degenerates. There is nothing kind. There is nothing warm. These vampires of Clan Toreador are the most likely to drain a human dry, and not just of blood, but of love, of emotion, of compassion. When the Toreador is done with a human, the Toreador is not going to have sympathy for the human. It's not going to try to reinvigorate that human like a used battery the Toreador will drop the human in the bin and move on to the next victim take solace in that most vampires use kine as blood bags only the Toreador use them for every purpose a human could be used With Clan Toreador out of the way, it leaves us with two more, the Giovanni and La Sombra. You know what they say about leaving the best till last, well, you'll get one of them next. Thank you very much for watching.